think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? My new way, King Dick back here. And so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. See the glow shining in the eyes. Seems distant. Strange. Mark Holmes is my dad. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great hump day. It's all downhill after this point, and it is great because right now the Dallas Cowboys are in phase two of uh, OTAs. I mean, that means that this is the first time that the coaches and the players can start working together on the field. And it's great because Zeke Elliott will be back on the field today and in the huddle with Dak Prescott. And um, you got to love that story. Now, I hope that this isn't the be all end all that Jerry Jones, who said during the draft that he sees that, you know, Zeke Elliott could be a starter. Uh, from what he saw last year. I see Zeke Elliott as a rotational player, and I hope that we do bring in some other players. And what I'm actually hoping is, is that the Cowboys have been doing a rope-a-dope, that they literally have done what they've always done, which is never be a player in free agency, and um, draft well, hopefully drafting well, and then getting in free agents to fill in the holes. Now, this year has been a little bit different than usual um, because usually the Cowboys sign quite a few of their own players, and they let quite a few of them go. Um, people have been saying, of course, you know, oh, my God, the Cowboys, they let go valuable players and starters and things. You know, Dante Fowler and Dorrance Armstrong and Hankins are uh, ones, you know, uh, Tyler Biotish and, of course, Tyron Smith being one of the biggest ones that have gone. But at some point, you look at this, and I think about uh, everybody who's you know panicking and saying that the Cowboys, they're rebuilding, they're starting all over, they're setting Dak Prescott up for failure. I look at this kind of differently because I think about after the 2021 season. Now, think about this. 2020 was a disaster. Dak Prescott broke his ankle. Um, we ended up 6-10, and 10, and it was bad. It was bad. We thought, you know, we were told that Andy Dalton, that there's no drop-off from Dak Prescott to Andy Dalton, that Andy Dalton, his numbers compared to Dak Prescott's first four years are identical, and that he is a veteran, and we would be in great shape. And again, the Commanders won the division at 7-10. and 10. That's how bad it was. We turned around without doing anything in free agency, and we ended up winning 12 games. Now, we were disappointed when it came to playing against San Francisco. San Francisco came in. They bullied us. And, of course, people trashed the Cowboys. And what did the Cowboys do to make it better? They traded Amari Cooper for a fifth-round pick. They let Cedric Wilson, our number three wide receiver, go sign a contract with the Miami Dolphins. They got rid of starting... Uh, guard Connor Williams. They let go Lyle Collins. Randy Gregory signed with the Denver Broncos. And we signed James Washington. Oh, we also did an extension for Michael Gallup, who tore his ACL. So when you look at that versus what they've done this offseason, hmm. It actually looks like they've done more because they've addressed a problem that has been a problem for many years. Let's be clear here. The Dallas Cowboys offensive line was basically at its pinnacle in about 2015-2016. Since that time, the offensive line has gone downhill. Tyron Smith missed his first games in 2016 and never had a full season healthy throughout the eight years of Dak Prescott. 
Some years playing as little as two. Travis Frederick, Hillian Barr syndrome, and had been replaced by Joe Looney and Biotis. And both of those guys let you op- left you opining for the days of Travis Frederick. Guard situation. Until Tyler last year was not set after Connor Williams, who still left you wanting a little more in there. Tyron Smith, over the last four years, averaged seven and a half games a season. Zach Martin's been Zach Martin, all pro. Terrence Steele, terrible as a rookie, great as a sophomore, was going really good towards ACL, average last year, hopefully will rebound. So the Cowboys went into this draft and saying, we need to fix the offensive line. We need to fix the offensive line. And you know, the thing that's funny to me is, um, that's our glaring weakness. I mean, you got two starting offensive linemen gone. Biggest need. We go out and we try and address that in the draft, right? So we may have two rookies that are starting on the offensive line. Philadelphia, their biggest weakness is definitely their secondary. They go out, they get two of the best prospects at cornerback, in which case they're going to be starting and having growing pains like ours, and they're the greatest move in the world. For us, oh, we're rebuilding. We should have gotten weapons for Dak. I'm trying to understand that. I, I honestly am trying to understand how it is that we turn around and say, oh, the Cowboys, mm. They're dissing Dak because they got some offensive linemen. Well, you tell you what, diss me some more. Disrespect me some more. Get me more offensive linemen. You know, get, you know what? Yeah, disrespect me more. Because if you give a quarterback time, and I don't mean any disrespect because today I end up going on Dan Cilio. Cilio. He's Cilio. Okay. Dan Cilio show today, 3.30. We'll live stream it here as well. Um, I don't mean any disrespect to Jalen Hurts because he is a good quarterback and anybody who can play any game as a quarterback in the NFL is a rare person all the way around. They just are. It's hard to get into the NFL. But Jalen Hurts, I don't know that he is as good if he doesn't have that offensive line. And let's be clear here. They've had a great offensive line, a great offensive line, and great weapons. He's a cog in the machine. If you don't think that it's easier when you have an offensive line that is blocking and opening holes for the running game and is keeping you upright, then you don't know football. I pointed out yesterday, the thing that was interesting was the New York Giants. The New York Giants... In 2016, they beat the Cowboys twice. They swept us. We both made the playoffs um, and so on. But they beat us twice. In that offseason where they still had Eli Manning, they ended up signing Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, a young Odell Beckham Jr. who did not have ACL injuries. And everybody was, oh, my God. How are you going to stop that offense? Eli Manning, two-time Super Bowl winner. Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard. Odell Beckham Jr. They're just going to be throwing the ball all over the place, and nobody's going to stop them. You know what's funny? That team that has spent $250 million on their defense and free agents, that year went in the toilet. They were first in passing attempts, 19th in yardage and 23rd in TDs with those guys. Because I said, that's great to have all those weapons. But I said, Eli Manning's going to get killed by behind that offensive line. And that was the truth. That was the difference. See, you must have time as a quarterback. You must have time. And that's one of the reasons why you see so many of these drafted young quarterbacks that end up failing 
Because they go to teams that have bad offensive line and bad offensive coordinators and things, and they get beat up and gun shy. So for the Cowboys to look and get two studs out of one draft pick, out of one draft pick is a miracle. Now, it may take time for those guys to get up to speed, but the future is bright with those. Now, the thing that's funny is Micah Parsons, the, the, the Eagles, I, I, I'm trying to understand you guys, Eagles. You know, everything is, did the Eagles catch up or did the Eagles separate themselves from the Cowboys? Or the Eagles, of course, are in better shape because they got these, you know, great prospects at cornerback. Okay, it's always the Eagles compared to the Cowboys. Micah Parsons goes to the 76ers game. Immediately, Eagle fans say, oh, my God, he wants to be an Eagle. You know, he goes to everything in Dallas, too, right? Then, of course, you see him with Allen Iverson. Oh, my God, he's hanging out with Allen Iverson. He wants to be an Eagle. You guys want him so bad. So, so bad. You do know that Allen Iverson's a Cowboy fan, right? You, you, you know that, right? There's pictures of him in Cowboys gear with Jerry Jones. So, be cool. Relax. And so now, the recruitment is on. Kevin Hart <laughs> has his show, Cold as Balls, on Laugh Out Loud Network, they filmed it live with Micah Parsons there. And, of course, Kevin Hart is an Eagles fan who he played in his church league, of course. He got injured, unfortunately. That's why he's not in pro football. Um, but he's heavily trying to recruit Micah Parsons. And I want to play a little bit of this. Thank you. Micah, you need to get you some. I smelled you when you came out here. Smelled like cowboy ass. <laughs> okay, uh, why did you make the decision to start doing that this early in your career? Um, you know, for me, it's always about not where you're at right now, but where you're going to be. I think you should always be trying to be better uh, for yourself later down the road. Because, you know, this game don't last forever. I can't say that I'm going to be dominant for a decade you want to be i think that is very smart also think it's good for you to be thinking outside the game of football while playing football that's the message that a lot of these younger players sometimes don't get that's what's overlooked you know i thought that my career was going to last forever and it didn't um you know i took a hit from pastor troy so i had to miss some games i, I missed a perfect season you missed we, a couple sundays we was on our way to a perfect season right and it's never been done in the church football leagues i know it hasn't like. apparently that's something I'm dealing with. Um, okay, I got more questions for you. How do you feel about the way your season ended this year? Was it an emotional moment for you? If we could push in on his face right now, like his energy just dropped. Your face twisted a little bit. Like it was like dun, dun, dun. it was really sad. So let's. I want to get into that. Let's get into the emotions of it. Yeah, I, I can't lie. Like when you put a lot into the game and you put a lot into like what you want to be and uh, how you want to be. Obviously, when the outcome doesn't reach of what your expectations is, it's yeah. frustrating. <laughs> and, it's, about it. and it's demoralizing and not how I wanted my season to end. I did think it was our year and for some reason we just didn't put it together. And, uh, but it's hard to get on top of the hill. I mean, as a guy who's gotten over the top of the hill and it's but still But how long did it take you? Well, I mean, if you really want to know. Cause Kev, I, you know, I, I was a fan. I seen your stand-ups, what yeah. you was doing. It took you a minute. 20 years. That's all it took. And that's where the Cowboys years. is at right now. Just to know. We're about to get over that hill. You think the Cowboys are at 20 years? We're a little over 20. Troy Eggman and Emmitt Smith are both 78 and 83 years old now. So the last time that you guys done anything, yeah, that's a long time ago, man. That's a long time ago, which is fine. Um, okay, you're in the locker room. It's game time. What's the preparation that you go through? Yeah, so like the whole week, like, or just the game focus. Game day. You heard what I asked. I mean, I feel like the preparation starts on Monday. This is why you're an asshole. This, this is because of this, okay? I'm talking about, do you eat an orange? Do you take a scoop of peanut butter? You didn't butter? say that. You didn't say what's my pre-day meal. What's your pre-game regimen? Yeah, I mean, I drink, I get a, you know, instead of Red Bull, I drink NoCo. That's it? No, I, I mean, 
let's say the game, because we get primetime. Let's just say we are a 4 o'clock game. Why do they keep giving the Cowboys primetime games? Because we're the best. There we go. I know, but at some point, I feel like these networks got to get smart and go, get these assholes off of TV. What are they doing? Who would you prefer? Well, the Eagles. Just a much better program. So you could just push your quarterback in the end zone? You son of a <laughs> You son of a Nobody wants to watch it. What? Sorry. I'm sorry. Who the fuck is clapping? Hey! <laughs> Bam! Daryl! I want them removed. I'm Listen, sorry. And your jealousy for the Philadelphia Eagles is insane. I I'm mean, not we jealous. talked about this. I'm just saying, you saying why we not on TV when we the when we the star, we the show. Another question, man, before we go. What other things are you looking to involve yourself in at the young space and place in your career? Hmm, that's a good question. You got the right of this because I'm a good host. Um, for me, I'm really just trying to get into things that make me happy. Okay. I'm not going to lie, I played pickleball one time, fell in love with pickleball, and next thing you know, I'll start ownership in a pickleball team. There you go. You should drive whatever makes you happy, and I just think that, you know, that's just about. big for me. Well, I'm going to tell you what makes me happy, man, seeing your success. Uh, I know you as a person, and all jokes aside, I can give you cowboy shit all day. You're a dope individual. I think you should just keep going, man. Sky's the limit for you, and it's much more. What are you doing? Bam, we're wrapping it up. We're wrapping it up. We don't need no more ice, and you need to be careful. That's how you fell and bust your ass. Go sit down. Sit down, bitch. Son of a <laughs> Get off, Daryl. Go some. This is why y'all shouldn't even be here for these live episodes. You shouldn't be here. Oh, Lord. My God, I gotta be honest, man. I'm happy. I'm happy that you understand what happiness means. Keep chasing your happiness, all right? Happy and the only happen. way that you're gonna get there is to get the out of Dallas. You gotta find another program. Who? You gotta find another program. Who said? The Eagles. You figure out a way to get to Philadelphia, and happiness Ugh. will find you faster. Where's the Eagles at? Philadelphia. What do you mean, where are we at? Where are you at right now? The same place you are, sitting on the exactly. same couch. And your methodology, I should be in Kansas City. <laughs> you want to play for Kansas City. That was breaking news here on Coldest Ball. <laughs> <laughs> we just got, we just got right. breaking news here on Coldest Ball. We're, we're going to leave it. Parsons, one time later. We're going to leave it right there. And then... If that wasn't enough bitch slapping of the Eagles, here's a dose of reality here because this is actually really good from yesterday on Get Up because, you know, people are saying the Eagles have separated themselves from the Cowboys or have they and stuff. And, you know, there's the ones out there that will say, oh, the Eagles are more successful and stuff. But they seem to forget that the Eagles fell off a cliff yesterday, last year, that they were the team that was everybody's favorite to go back to the Super Bowl. The Cowboys weren't. And we ended up on the couch together. Let's go to the tape. Okay, and then let's go to the other teams there. Have the Eagles separated themselves from Dallas by having what seems to be an excellent offseason while the Cowboys have mostly sat it out? Well, I love the Eagles offseason so far. Their draft is fun, but they kind of do this every offseason. And it's hard for me not to love a team that picked up Two of my favorite corners in this draft, one of which is a pioneer, which is gives you extra bonus points. But uh, separating themselves suggested that they were neck and neck with the Cowboys. And that's not how I remember things going towards the end of last year. That that whole building was a shambles. Like they, they had to clean out the whole coaching staff. They were talking about firing the coach altogether. There's rumors in the offseason of strife between the players. Like there's a lot of issues in um, Philadelphia that we're not sure have been addressed or not yeah, that's interesting. There you go. Now, Jeff Darlington, you were making that point to me earlier. Mm -hmm. We've spent a lot of time talking about the one game that ended Dallas this season. But you were thinking a lot more about a larger period of time that ended the Eagles season. Yeah, an epic collapse that had to do with, first of all, a, a lot of things. We could talk about the coaching staff for sure. We can talk about the inability to get any pressure on the quarterback, stop the run toward that late stretch of the season and by the way they got smoked by the cowboys uh in december so very oh. clearly uh, they're gonna have to do more than just do it on paper i think that howie roseman had a great draft i still believe nick sirianni is an incredibly capable head coach but you can't have an epic collapse like they did then just say okay we fixed that by drafting these players without actually going on the field and doing it and that's why for the eagles this will be the longest off season in team history they cannot wait to get to the start of this season to prove that that collapse was an aberration, not a reality. Tim Hasselbeck, how do you see it all coming down? Because the, the Cowboys, again, have yeah. done as close to nothing as you can possibly do. Have the Eagles have done a lot. How do you see it? 
Yeah, I think the guys make a great point. You think about Nick Sirianni as a head coach, loses both coordinators, and I think he handled his new coordinators poorly a year ago. Now he gets an opportunity to do a better job of that with Kellen Clemens, who's a proven coordinator, and Vic Fangio, who's a proven coordinator. I don't think any of us doubt the talent in, on Philadelphia's roster. They're extremely talented. And to Nick's point, they, they added, uh, you know, great guys on the defensive side. And then you just look at what they've done offensively. You know, Saquon Barkley, like, that moves the needle. So, look, I, I think they probably were as talented, if not maybe more, than Dallas. I think they are. I think that's still the case. And I think it's about Nick Sirianni as a head coach handling his assistants and <clears throat> coordinators differently than he did a year ago. And if he does... Yeah, I think they're a different team than the Dallas Cowboys. Nick, what do you think? Right, right now, if you have the Palatial State for down there in our nation's capital on one or the other, or <laughs> I guess any of the four teams in that division to win it, which one would you do? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Graz is not here, which means I'm allowed to go with repeat champions in that division. So I what? think I would stick with the Cowboys for now. Their biggest issue is figuring out a way to sign three Pro Bowl level talents that are on their team. They've been consistently good over the past, what, five years? Or actually, not just that. When Dak is healthy, they're a good team. So I think I'm sticking with them for now until we see that all the issues that the Eagles had have been addressed. And some of the sch schematic issues they had last year, I'm sure will improve with the new coaching staff. But we still need to see it on the field, as bad as they looked towards the end of last season. There you what go. Graz would remind us is that it has been 20 years since any team won that division in back-to-back -back seasons. So his... Yes, it is true. It has been 20 years since the last time anybody has won back-to-back. -back. Um, not an easy task at all. It is not. You get the target on your back and everything else that goes along with it. But we'll see what we're going to see. I think the Eagles have a little bit of arrogance that maybe they shouldn't. I'm not going to say that they're not a good team and all that. But they have this preordained thing that they are, you know, God's gift to the NFL, much like they did last year. And they found out. Yeah, they found out. So as always, good people, I appreciate you guys being here and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. And I'll see you soon. King Kong ain't got shit on me.